Hey folks, Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with your daily devotional. Anybody that knows me knows I've been a big fan of John Stott over the years, pastor, theologian, author, commentator on the Bible. And this uh, daily reader is just a a great one. It's called Through the Bible Through the Year. And you're going to get sort of a Uh, the top layer of the storyline from Genesis all the way through Revelation, if you get a book like this and use it as a daily reader. Uh, This particular writing that I'm going to read for you today coincides with a Bible study I happen to be doing at the Village Chapel right now. We're going through the book of Genesis, verse by verse, chapter by chapter. And uh, if you're watching this at some other time, uh, you feel free to visit thevillagechapel.com and download those sermons from the archive there or go to the Village Chapel YouTube channel. One of the playlists is the sermons and you can find all of our uh, studies in the book of Genesis if you're curious or interested in that. Uh, John Stott on this particular day, it's called True Freedom is the is this day's reading. And he uh, quotes from Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. I'll read that text from the Bible first, and then John's comments. Uh, and the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. Stott says, God gave Adam two simple, straightforward instructions, one positive, the other negative. The first was a liberal permission. He might eat from any and every tree in the garden. The second was a single prohibition. He must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which was in the middle of the garden. And so this is uh, one of those times where you just kind of look and you just try to imagine what that would be like uh, if we were put ourselves in a similar kind of a situation. You walk into your favorite restaurant that has a four mile long salad bar and there is everything there. There's there's all kinds of leafy, you know, spinach and and spring mix uh, uh, lettuce of all, you know, 16 different varieties of lettuce. Uh, there's there's little baby corns. I love those. There's lots of uh, kernel corn, if you like that. There's some beans and corn mix. Uh, there's some cottage cheese, some fresh fruit of all kinds of varieties. There are uh, eggs aplenty. There are little cherry tomatoes. I love lots of those. I put those on my, you know, and then the strips of shaved carrot. I love that. And then there's 45 different salad dressings, okay? And that's really good. And a great salad bar always has chocolate pudding or tapioca pudding. I like that as well. What that's got to do with salad, I haven't got a clue. But I'm really glad they put it on those mile long salad bars because they got to fill it up. But just imagine you went into that restaurant and you were so you can have anything on there. There's one thing. Don't, don't take the beets. The beets. Don't. When you get there, just make sure you go around. The, so the idea is liberal permission here for Adam in the garden as he's there. You can eat and, and there are probably myriad number of different trees, all kinds of different uh, stuff to eat. And there's just this one tree, this uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and he's not supposed to. So here's what happens. Uh, Stock goes on to say, the liberal permission gave an almost completely unfettered access to the rich variety of trees in the garden. And they were both, we're told in, in verse nine, pleasing to the eye, and good for food, all right? So beautiful, the salad bar was kept really clean and, and, and everything was tidy and beautiful colors and all that stuff and really good for food. That means tasty, delicious. Um, uh, all of the fruit was ripe. All of the vegetables were in just the perfect condition for eating. And, and so it would have been pleasing to the eye and good for food, thus offering Adam and Eve aesthetic and material satisfaction. Stott goes on to say, God's generous provision also included access to the tree of life, we're told. And this is symbolic of continuous fellowship with God, which is eternal life, as it's referred to in John's gospel in the New Testament. And is later glimpsed in the uh, later statement that the Lord God himself walked with them in the garden. And that'll be in Genesis uh, 3. As you look into your Bible and you're studying through a book like Genesis, you find uh, the first two chapters are uh, the broad creation story in chapter one. A little more, uh, the camera's lens zooms in a little bit more in chapter two. 
And then chapter three has a little more of what happens when the humans don't pay attention to God's instructions as given here in chapter two about the garden and what they can and cannot do. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil referred to in the solitary prohibition is so-called not because it had magical properties, but because it stood for the probation on which Adam and Eve had been placed. Created in God's image, they already had a degree of moral discernment, but if they disobeyed God, they would have a disastrous experience of evil as well as of good. And see, here we really see the crossroads, the moral crossroads for each and every one of us. We're there almost every day. Uh, no, we are there every day, many times a day, I'm sure. Uh, and we have the, the, at the moral crossroads, we have the option. We can either obey God and, and not get angry at someone and react, um, we can obey God and and tell the truth. Um, so the first one, not getting angry, is a is a negative command. Don't get angry. Don't be angry. Uh, be angry. Don't sin. Uh, the New Testament tells us uh, we there are proper things to be angry at, uh, but I'm rarely proper in all of that. Most of my anger falls in the other category. Maybe you do. I don't know. But uh, telling the truth is good, and I'm not just. I'm not just talking about when somebody says, what'd you buy me for Christmas? And, and, uh, and you trying to find some way to get out of telling the truth. I'm talking about telling the truth, uh, being at heart an honest person, not trying to manipulate the situation for your own good, not trying to avoid the consequences of some of the things that you've chosen to do that are really leaving God out. And that's really what this all gets to, isn't it? It's sort of uh, humanity's problem of worshiping at the altar of autonomy. We want to have it our way. If we walk into that and see that salad bar, we want everything on the salad bar and we think we're entitled to it. And what we think is that true freedom would be full and unfettered access to everything. And what the Bible teaches us over and over and over again is that true freedom, see, is actually to live in a proper relationship with God as God designed us to and to walk in his ways, to, uh, to seek and consider and honor his, his will. And both, both of those things we do when we gain wisdom from his word. So we study his word to draw from it wisdom, to see how we can walk in his ways and delight in his will. All right, that's a beautiful sort of way to look at all of this. And it all goes back to the garden. And what we find with Adam and Eve, our first parents, of course, uh, most of you know already, I'm not, this isn't a spoiler alert thing I have to do or anything, but it doesn't go well. And so that's why God told them, not only here's the positive thing you could do, this liberal permission to do, you can eat from anything except this one prohibition, don't do that. And there are consequences to that. And your autonomy, your desire to live apart from God as if God doesn't matter is going to cost you. And it, will, it, it has eternal consequences is the idea. And so we're constantly being called back, aren't we, to the garden in a way. And, and now, with, with the fact that Jesus has come, you see, and he's paid the price for our sins, that he's repaired the breach between us and God, here's the great news, see? Um, when I, not if I, but when I blow it and turn away from God and go my own way, I have an advocate with the Father, and his name is Jesus, and so do you. And this is such good news. And you hear about that. This is from Genesis 2, what we read today, but you hear about that all the way back in Genesis 3. So when things go south, all the way back in Genesis 3, immediately God sets in play uh, the plan that he has had since before the foundations of the world. And his redemption plan is going to bring him honor and glory and bring many sons and daughters to glory as well. Well, I have gotten off track, haven't I? I apologize. Uh, Stott finishes up with this. A Finnish student at the University of Helsinki once said to me, I'm looking for freedom and I'm getting more free since I gave up God. And a lot of people think that. Again, a lot of people think that true freedom 
is the freedom to do whatever they want to at any particular time in any particular situation. And we, you can just use your imagination a little bit. You can figure out how that can go south for a society of more than one. And even for a society of one, it can go south. Why? Because my desires, my affections can often be misdirected. That's why I love the book of Genesis. We keep going back and pushing reset when we study the book of Genesis. And we were, we're reminded of God's original creation design in so many things. So Stott closes up and says, True freedom is not found in discarding Christ's yoke, but in submitting to it. That is through refraining from what he's forbidden us. Obedience means life and disobedience means death. And thank God we have an advocate, one who has uh, obeyed into its fullest and fulfilled the law in our Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's why we put our faith, hope, and confidence in Him. That's the good news, folks. Let me pray for you. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this reminder as well that you've created us with some kind of moral significance. Uh, unlike any other part of creation, we're not merely subject to the laws of nature. We're not merely operating by instinct but you've actually placed within us a capacity for moral understanding. So Lord, draw our eyes to you. Jesus, um, draw our, our hearts to you that we might love you with our whole hearts and seek to walk in the wisdom of your ways and your will for your honor and glory. Amen and amen. Have a great day. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey.